In this first video for Unit 2, we're going to look at translating mathematical words into symbolic language. So notice this chart below, it's located in your media lesson packet, and we're going to use this as a reference for our future problems. In addition to translating mathematical words into language, symbolic language, we're also going to have symbolic forms that we're going to translate into mathematical words. So notice this chart contains a certain information. The first column tells you the relationship, equal, not equal to, addition, subtraction, etc. Then we have a symbolic representation using arithmetic, using only numbers, and then how we might phrase that arithmetic in words. Notice there's more than one way that we frequently do this. Then we have a symbolic representation with algebra and how we translate the algebra into words. So we're not going to refer back to this constantly, but this is a good resource for you to use when you're working on your U-Try problems or your homework. So let's look at the first problems. Use the following information for translating mathematical language into symbolic forms from the previous page to write the following phrases or statements as expressions or equations. So notice in the left-hand column we have a phrase or a statement. Okay. So a phrase is going to correspond to a symbolic expression, and then a statement is going to correspond to an equation. So in a statement, we'll see the word is or is the same as, and that's going to give us a sentence that translates to an equation. So let's get started on the first one. It's good to have highlighters ready. So we have four less than the quotient of twice a number and seven. So we're going to somewhat diagram these sentences, maybe like you've done in English class before. So let's work look at work at looking at some key words. So the first thing I notice, so it does start with four less than, but let's go back to that later. The first thing I notice is the word, the words, the quotient of. Okay. So if you see the quotient of, the difference between, the sum of, the product of, all of those are saying that it's going to be followed by two quantities or expressions that you're going to perform an operation on. So in this case, the quotient, so it's going to be division. So follow along in the phrase and notice that it says of twice a number and seven. So I'm going to highlight the word and yellow because this and corresponds to the quotient of. Now let's get a green highlighter. And let's highlight the two things that we're finding the quotient of. So that would be twice a number and seven. Okay. So you're going to put these in order, meaning that the quotient of twice a number, which would be, let's use n, two times n over seven. Okay. So we're going to use fraction expressions for quotients. Okay. Now let's go back to this first part that I skipped. So it said four less than the quotient of twice a number and seven. So four less than, what are we going to do with that? So let's think about um, something with arithmetic. If I said four less than five, notice that result would be one. So four less than five, even though the four comes first in the phrase, is equivalent to 5 minus 4. You're taking away the 4 from the 5. So here when it says 4 less than the quotient of, we need to take 4 away from the entire quotient. So the minus 4 isn't going to go at the beginning. We're going to take our quotient, which was 2n over 7, and then we're going to do minus 4. So when you see these four less than, four more than, three times, sometimes that's at the beginning, it's applying to future quantities or expressions in the phrase. So let's look at the next one. So we have three times, so I'm going to save that for later. Then it says the difference between, or we could think of the difference of, a number and five. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight the end yellow as well. Now in green, let's highlight what we're finding the difference between. The first value says a number, and the second value says 5. So that means we want to subtract 
a number, which I'll call x in this case, minus 5. Now, going back to the beginning, it said 3 times the difference. Okay? So that means we want to multiply this entire difference, x minus 5, by 3. So I'm going to write that to the left, so 3 times x minus 5. And I put a little dot for multiplication. But notice, if we just put this all next to each other right now, it would just multiply the order by the order of operations. We would just multiply the 3 by the x, since multiplication comes before subtraction. And that's not what we want. So we need to be careful with differences and sums, because we want 3 times the entire difference. And to indicate that, we should put the x minus 5 in parentheses. So let's write our final expression over here. So I'm going to write 3 parentheses, x minus 5, close parentheses. Now notice I took out the multiplication sign. You can keep it there if you want. But we actually used an idea here that we used in the previous problem as well called juxtaposition, which is basically a fancy word for next to. So on this top one, when we have 2n, the 2 and n are next to each other. But remember that reply um, corresponded to twice a number. So we don't need to write the multiplication. It's implied that we're multiplying them when they're next to each other. The same idea applies here. Since we have the x minus 5 in parentheses, it's implied that if we put a 3 out front, even with no operation symbols, that we're multiplying the 3 by the entire expression x plus 5. Let's look at the next one. So this one starts with the difference between. So that means we're starting with subtraction. And then it says 3 times x and 5. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight the end because that tells me what we're finding the difference between. So let's get a green highlighter. Now the quantity before the end was 3x and the quantity after the end is 5. So that means we want to subtract 3x minus 5. So 3 times x we'll write as 3 times x difference, we want to use subtraction, minus 5. And again, when we write our symbolic expression, we won't use the multiplication sign. We'll just put the 3 and the x right next to each other and subtract 5. Let's look at the next one. The product of 4 less than x and 8 more than x. So that's really a mouthful, so it's really going to help us if we use this diagramming. So notice it starts with the product of, so I'm going to highlight the product of. That means we're going to be multiplying two things. So let's find the end. So it says 4 less than x and 8 more than x. Okay. So now we can see, if I take this green highlighter, the phrase before end is 4 less than x. And the phrase after end is 8 more than x. So that means we're going to be multiplying 4 less than x times 8 more than x. So now let's make expressions for them. So remember, 4 less than x, we reverse the direction. That means we're starting with x and we're subtracting 4. And 8 more than x, that means we're taking x and we're adding on 8 more, so x plus 8. So notice in 8 more than x, if I wrote it 8 plus x, it would be mathematically equivalent because uh, the commutative property of addition, it doesn't matter which direction you add in. But it's a good practice just to think of the 8 more than as adding on to the end because that'll come into play in other problems like the 4 less than did here in problem A. So now we want to multiply these two quantities. Uh, so notice we have a sum and a difference. So in order to show the multiplication, we need to perform the sum and the difference first, and we will put them in parentheses to indicate that. So parentheses, x minus 4, new set of parentheses, x plus 8. Okay. So notice if we just put a multiplication sign between these two, 
by the order of operations, we do the multiplication first, which would be 4 times x. And that's not what we want. We didn't want the product of 4 and x. We wanted the product of 4 less than x with the other expression 8 more than x. Okay. So both the subtraction and addition will go in parentheses. Next one. 4 fewer than, so it looks like I'm going to subtract 4 at the end. Let's highlight the product of a number and, so I'm going to highlight and yellow as well, 8 more than a number. Now let's take the green and highlight the things we're finding a product of. So a number and 8 more than a number. So here I'll use n just to change things up. So I want to multiply a number and with 8 more than n, which I'll write as n plus 8. Now notice I put both of them in parentheses. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then remember the beginning part said 4 fewer than that product. So there's our product. At the end we subtract 4. Okay. Now Notice I have the n in parentheses because we're multiplying these two expressions, but they're not really necessary when we just have n in the parentheses. So here there's an operation addition we need to perform first. Okay. Within these parentheses there's no operation, it's just a single variable which is a single quantity. So when we write our final expression we'll write it as n parentheses n plus 8 close parentheses minus 4. Look at the next one. We have the product of, so I'm going to highlight that yellow, 3 and the sum of 8 and a number is 2. Okay, a lot of things going on here. So the product of 3, I'm going to look for that first end, and then I'm going to highlight in green the two things I'm finding a product of. So the first factor in my product is 3. The second factor of my product is the sum of 8 and a number. Okay. So notice there's an operation built into that as well. We'll look at that in a second. The next word is is. So that's one of those cases where we have an equation now. Is is where we're going to put our equal sign. And since it is 2, 2 is going to be on the right hand side of the equal sign. And we'll put the rest of this on the left. So now let's work out this product. Okay, so we have the product of 3 and this next part is a sum. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in parentheses. The sum of 8 and a number. Okay, so sum means addition. We could have also written this as 8 more than a number. Okay, uh, since it says 8 and a number I'm going to write it as 8 plus n because 8 is coming first in the phrase. Again, they're mathematically equivalent, but later when we have context, it may make a difference. And then it says this is 2, so I'm going to put equals 2. So we have 3 parentheses, 8 plus n, close parentheses, equals 2. And finally, our last one, we have 3 more than x is. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight is immediately. The left hand side is 3 more than x and usually I save the 3 more than or 3 less than when it starts till the end but notice this is the whole left hand side of the equation. 3 more than x we would write as x plus 3. Now let's look at the right hand side. 2 less than the quotient of x and 7. So this has another operation in it. So I see the quotient of and we're finding the quotient of x and 7. And I highlighted the end in yellow. And then at the end we're going to, let's underline that in red. It's 2 less than the quotient so we'll subtract 2. Just like here we had 3 more than x so we added 3 to x. So now this right hand side is, well let's find the quotient of x and 7. So x over 7. Then we're going to take 2 less by subtracting 2 and in between these two expressions we're going to put equals. And we have x plus 3 equals x over 7 minus 2.